Back now to the time uh, long ago, way, way back. You sound like the friendly giant. <laughs> This is named Bob Ami, wasn't it? Ami? H-O-M-M-E? Ami? -E? To me, he was just a friend of the giant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want reality. So, back in the uh, 70s, uh, you know, it was kind of interesting. In, in Canada, we didn't really uh, embrace our artists unless they did okay in the States. And, and then we went, oh yeah, they must be collect. And, you know, and then, of course, <coughs> King K. Tell Records. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a K. Tell Caddy stacker, you could have a copy of this song. <laughs> so this, you know, this was sort of a, a badge of success. Uh, Canadian, oh yeah, that song, ain't it? That was on that same big k tell package, along with uh, Dead Skunk in the Middle Road, Stink in the High Hat, Spiders and Snakes. Whew! He must be good. So this was, uh, this one did quite well for me, and, um, and it was interesting what popped out of the woodwork in that window. Uh, my dad had taken us all down to Durham, North Carolina, while he was working on his master's in philosophy down there. I got a phone call from a guy I had not heard of since grade two. And the phone rings, I think his parents, maybe had my parents' number, I'm not exactly sure, but I get this phone call out of the blue. Ian, it's Ronnie Clark! From Durham, North Carolina, Ronnie Clark? Yeah, oh, I knew, I knew, Ian, I knew all along or something. You know, you are either going to jail or you're going to uh, be a singer or something. I know, I know. <laughs> and I, I called my brother Dave up and I just told him about the conversation. Ronnie Clark, wow, from Durham, yeah, yeah. And we started reminiscing about that time. And uh, so we were down there from 56 to 59, and Dave was a couple of years ahead of me in school. We both had the same grade three teacher. And at the end of the grade three term, Mrs. Brown, would take a class to the Winston-Salem Cigarette Factory. <laughs> I don't know if it's to get a glimpse of your future. But at the end of the tour, each kid was handed a carton of smoke. <laughs> now you gotta know, this is back in the days when the doctors were doing their rounds, there was a nurse following them with the ashtray. Anyway, a lot of wonderful uh, memories. Uh, so when Faded Ladies was a hit, I got a phone call from Marty Short and Paul Schaefer. They were down in New York City. Uh, and I get this phone call. They're at Carnegie Deli. Or it was, a, it was like the Carnegie Deli, but it might not have been the Carnegie Deli. And uh, they had put a nickel in there or whatever, a quarter in the, the jukebox. And they had... So Marty's holding the door, and uh, Paul Schaefer is holding the phone inside the restaurant. Ian, Ian, listen to this! Your song on the jukebox, the jukebox in New York City! It's just like such a nice, cheesy little Canadian moment. <laughs> a sweet phone call. So here we go, this is 1973. sort of autobiographical. I was the son of a minister who had become a philosophy uh, student and then professor. Here I was in a band playing, let's say, the seedier establishments in southern Ontario, sharing dressing rooms often with strippers, so it wasn't all bad. <laughs> it was a whole world I had never seen before, though. <laughs> Say no more. There we go, 1973. I remember sitting out just to see what I could see.
part of the song. 